السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلا حيا على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله عليه الصلاة والسلام وهو سيد الخلق وخاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد يقول الله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ويقول الله عز وجل يا أيها الناس تقوا الله تقوا الله تقوا الله ويقول الله عز وجل يا أيها الناس تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اللهم اجعلنا من الفائزين والتائبين Obey Allah and His Messenger, it is important in everything we do as a Muslim. When Allah in this ayah says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, taqu Allah, wa qulu qawlan sadida, yuslah lakum a'amalakum, wa yaghfir lakum dunubakum, wa man yuta'i Allah wa rasoolahu, faqad faza fawzan azeema. What does this mean? Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, He is addressing us. Taqu Allah, be conscious of Allah. وَقُولُ قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا الْقَوْلُ السَّدِيدِ It is what is truthful and honest and straight forward. When I ask our beloved Sheikh Al-Hanut Allah Al-Hamu, I said, what does this mean? He said, imagine you take a bow and arrow and you pull it and you hit it right in the bull's eye. That means your words have to be straight forwards. You don't go around. You don't have hypocrisy in your language. You don't have angry in your anguish. You're not angry about stating things. So you have to figure out how to relate the truth yeah, in the most honest way, straightforwardly, without any anger, without any emotion. A lot of time, we have biases. And the biases in the English language that mean I had certain problem, or I have certain emotional background or some situation that I went through, it would be a divorce, it would be a tra business transaction, a business partner. Now I'm painting everybody to the same, or I'm coming and giving my opinion by the biases that I have. Because I still have anger in me that somehow the action that was done to me, harmful to me, I am angry about it and I'm going to seek vengeance. So never, never... I am just in, use justice to be truthful than when I am just, you know, serving 
in any position, either as a counselor in marriage, as somebody who's trying to bring two brothers together that they had an issue because I have biases. So I'm always angry at the situation of somebody that I might believe he's acting the same way that was done to me. Islam forbids such thing. You never come to a situation with biases. A lot of problem in our communities that a person become angry and seek vengeance because he has biases. He has issues internally. Then he display them outwardly. That means if I have a problem with brother, I am angry at him. I am never going to give him a chance and I'm going to seek to you know, vengeance the situation that I am at. So therefore, we have to be conscious. When we say, you know, conscious that means you bring in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are responsible in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your action, for your words that you say. We cannot just continue haphazard as we see in our communities today is the problem we are facing. The issues as an ummah that we are facing and we are not seeking to solve them. We have what we call brotherhood in Islam. That means I will love for you what I love for myself. That means I have to give you the benefit of the doubt. Give you excuses. As one of the hadith says, 70 excuses. I always have to give to my brother excuses. Maybe he acted this way because of that. Maybe because of this. Because, And don't expose each other. Try to keep the problem internally. So when you exercise anger in this situation, anger will drive you to vengeance, will drive you to injustice, will drive you to cause harm to others. As we know, if there is a storm going on, a snowstorm, a blizzard, a hurricane, you would not walk in the middle of it because you want things to settle so you can see clearly that's the same thing with anger. Yes, we are created with emotion. Yes, we're going to get angry at the time, but we have to control that anger. In one of the hadith, when somebody went to the Prophet wasallam, was narrated in Amal bin al that he went to the Prophet wasallam and asked him to advise him what might save me from Allah's anger. He answered the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa la tahbab. Do not become angry. He asked him again. And he says, la tahbab. He asked him again. What will save me from the hellfire, from the wrath of Allah? La tahbab. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa never, never got angry for his own ego. For his own satisfaction. To seek vengeance. Today as an ummah, we see things that they are not pleasing to Allah. We see the boundaries of Allah that had made for us haram. They have been violated and some people pushing them to become halal. And we sit in quiet. It does not make me angry internally. Why? We get angry for our own ego. We get angry because I just don't like you. I get angry because I heard something about you. I get angry because somebody painted you this way. I get angry because you come from this place. I get angry because of your discolor. So already I'm coming with the biases that I'm looking for excuse to get angry and just mop the floor with you. And these things happen even in our marriages. Happen even when we're dealing with our children. We get angry with them because they did not behave a certain way. You don't have the right to be angry with them. You don't have the right for the husband to be angry with his wife and the wife to be angry. Yes, things are not wrong, but there is communication in Islam. There is when you're practicing the love and the understanding and the communication and you listen to understand why you want to avoid from a shaitan to enter. You want to avoid when you are mad and angry, you don't see clearly. You will take action that they are disastrous. When a person is angry, do not threaten your wife with a divorce. 
If a woman she's angry, she should not say to husband, if you're a man, divorce me. This is not the language we should practice. And it's been practiced in the community. Of a woman gets up when the, there is argument in the house and will stand and say to husband, if you're a man, hit me. And then all of a sudden 911 has been called. And there is no point of return because now you went into the roller coaster. You got angry at work because somebody has done injustice to you at your job. You come home and everybody in your house become a punching bag. Why? What is yeah. our deen? What is our man as, as the Muslims? What is the way that we, I say, I do Allah in the shaitan regime? I make wudu, I pray to Allah If I'm angry at work, I stop at the masjid, I make salat, I sit down, I read the Quran. I call my friend and say, listen, I have this situation. And whine before you get home and becomes, you know, a nightmare. If you have Facing challenges in your marriages, don't get angry. Seek counseling from the right people. Go to the masjid, talk to the imam. There are private Muslim counselors. Seek help to defuse the situation. Don't seek advice from people that they are shayateen. They are nothing but shayateen. They want no good for you or your family. Because they have biases. They are angry at everybody else because their life became disastrous. So they have... They fail in their marriages, or they fail in their businesses, or they fail in their personal life. So you want everybody to fail with them. And this is not how we should act. We have a tools in Islam. We have our beloved Prophet wasallam, who told us how to maneuver to in many situations. If you're angry, sit down. If you're angry, lay down. Go make wudu. And it is all this thing. They are tools. Tools. That help us calm our situation down. Walk away. Don't keep engaging back and forth. Don't lower yourself to insults. I insult your father, you insult my father, I insult your mother, you insult my mother. So where is this going to end? And who's sitting on the sideline being happy? Is the shaitan. And if you take an action that is harmful, there is no way you can correct it. There is no way you can correct it. We seek advice from the wrong people. When the Prophet ﷺ stated that, he meant what he meant. In the ayah, Sayyidina Musa ﷺ, ulamma sakata an Musa al-Gharab. And when the anger of Musa was appeased, that means Sayyidina Musa ﷺ did not act in anger. He waited until things calmed down. That means we have to wait. When I'm angry, in any situation, walk away. If you cannot deal with it, say, brother, sister, let me walk away. Can we talk about this another time? Even if you continue, put your head and walk away. Say, I do Allah help me. And walk away. Because there is no way, no way, in the storm, you go in, you know, to, to dry. No way that there is a blizzard you go in to get that far. No way if there is a fog, there is a fog in the road. You put your fog light, you put your headlights, you put your high beam. You can't see anything, you cannot see anything even in front of your car. Are you going to continue to drive? Of course not. This is the same thing when the Radab happened. The anger inside of you, the blood is running. You're so angry. You're looking to win at any cost. Your pride is high. No, why would you insult me? I'm going to insult you. Why will you attack my honor? I'm going to attack your honor. Yes, we are human beings. Yes, our emotions get hurt. But deal with it differently. Find the right people that are going to help you. Find the right tools that are going to make you maneuver things in your life. Not everything. Your life is not worth all the money in the world. If you get locked up, it's not worth all the money in the world. If you send somebody to jail, it's not worth all the money in the world. You're going to feel guilty sooner or later. Unless you're an evil person. How would you want another human being? Pass a moment. A human being. 
want to see him destroyed. Is that makes you feel good inside of you? Because of your anger, because of your envy, because of your jealousy. Where is the deen? Where is our salat? Where is our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where is our fasting, our hajj? We would, we let everything go because of this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَيْسَ الشَّدِيدُ بِالسُرْعَةِ إِنَّمَا الشَّدِيدُ الَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ عِنْدَ الْغَضَبِ The strong person did not, it is not the one who is strong in, in, in strength or wrestling, but the strong person is the one who is able to restrain himself when he is angry. That means you have control over your emotions. That means you have control. When you have control over your emotion, you go in to control the situation. The other person is angry. I'm sorry. I apologize. What do you want me to do? Even if you know you're right, because the benefit is you want to keep that relationship if it's meaningful to you. It is not about you. It is about us as a husband and wife, about us as a parents and the children, about us as a community. This is what we have to focus on. It is not by me. You don't live in a jungle by yourself. You live in within the community. We live in within a society. We live in within the family. Why did you get married if your anger is going to have you destroy your own marriage because of your own ego? Why would I seek to harm you? Send you to the hospital or send you to the jail? Why our actions are like this? Because we are not close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't seek to understand our religion. We're not practicing our deen properly. Our ibadat becomes cultural. Our relations with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala become cultural. Somebody will drive 10 miles to get halal meat, but he has no, you know, no relationship with Allah. Goes to the bar, sister don't wear hijab. They go in, you know, and, and, and celebrate anything that against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From Christmas to Halloween to New Year's Eve, all we celebrate this thing and we blast it over the media. And we think, oh, don't tell me again, this is the time of the year to tell me it's haram. No, it is haram. Now you, you're pushing for something to say this is halal. Once you make something haram and you say it's halal, you left the fold of Islam. Because now it's your ego, it is me, you know, why are you telling me this? No, you should tell me, because you love me and I love you. I should tell your brother, this is what it says. And we, we have to have the level of communication, because the love for each other. Linguistically, anger is a strong feeling of annoyance, displeasure, and hostility. Technically, anger is an internal change of emotion which prompts one to attack and seek revenge so to satisfy one's spirit. Fury is more intense than anger, so it defined as a wild and violent anger. Anger, it is the flaw that mm -hmm. has inflicted and still inflicted a number of Muslims that had led most of what we witness today in the Muslim Ummah. The feature anger. Anger has many features and forms, some of which include the swelling of blood vessel, the jugular vein, in addition to reddening of the face and the eye, frowning, bringing the eyebrows together, and wrinkling of the skin and the one's forehead, assaulting either phys verbally and physically, repaying an act of aggression with a similar or severer one without considering, considering the consequences. Extreme of passionate displeasure. This is anger. And when you go on through this, be careful. And you need to understand this. Just go and Google it. What is anger exactly says? In Arabic or in English, with any language that helps you understand. So when I'm starting to display this emotion, I have to come back and say, What did the Prophet ﷺ told me? La taghdab. La taghdab. La taghdab. That means don't be angry, don't be angry, don't be angry. What is the Prophet told me to do? Make wudu. Use cold water. Sit down. Lay down. 
walk away. Because if you continue and this action keep getting displaying, they will get harder and nastier and more dangerous. It's about something disastrous is going to happen. Here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated what أوتق غر الإيمان المولاة في الله والمعاداة في الله والحب في الله والبغض في الله The strongest of Iman Faith is having loyalty for the sake of Allah Dissociation from others for the sake of Allah Love for the sake of Allah And hatred for the sake of Allah That means Any action we take Has to be for the sake of Allah That's for my sake When somebody committing something that is haram As we see the behavior today in our society that they are normalizing behavior that contradict husband and wife, marriages, Islam, the behavior we're displaying, the things that we're pushing our children, I should get angry internally. I should get, you know, you know, angry in a way not to become violent, to take action, to stand for what is right, you know, to try to change the situation, to protect our children, our communities, not to stay and say, well, you know, this has nothing to do with me. It has something to do with you. Your children are in the same school, in the same public school. How much knowledge do you have about what your children have been taught? Then when your children leave the fold of Islam, don't get angry. Get angry at yourself. Get angry at your relationship with Allah that you have not committed to your relationship with Allah. You have not invested in that. You have not invested in yourself and your family and your children and your community. Because each one of us is an asset. Each one of us has something to offer. And the shaitan keeps telling you, no, you're not good enough. Everyone is good enough. Everyone has something to offer. We have our youth and our brothers and sisters in the territory are afraid to get married because of the atmosphere that's been created in the communities. The fear of marriages. Marriage is a beautiful thing. Everybody becomes scared. Because of what we hear, because we allow certain people to dominate from our communities the social media. And they make everything horrible. They take the inner, the inner secret of a family and blast it you know, over the media because they want to make money off it. And they say, we are solving the problem of the community. They have no education, they have no knowledge, they have no experience. Yet you see about 20,000 people following them and seeing them. When you have people that come and offer something beneficial to the community, you have five or six or ten people that are watching that. When you are lecturing in the masajid, go see how many people go and sit down and sit at it. And go how, see how many people are sitting at the shisha. Go see that. Let us be honest. Drive around in here and see how many cars have been parked. I'm going to say what I have to say because I'm responsible in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go see how many people sit in the lecture. Go. Dar Hijra, Adam Center, in here, in many places. 10, 15, 20, 30. She said we have more than four, five hundred people, all Muslims. Sit until four o'clock in the morning. When their wife and kids are sitting home. After he had worked the whole day, whatever he's done for a living, then he goes and sit there. So what does this family has to do? What what do you have to do? How is his wife supposed to who's she supposed to talk to? Then she gets on social media and found the horrible people that are going to mislead her and push her away from the Islam. Your children the same thing. They're going to get on social media, they're going to do that. Then you don't get angry at these things. But you get angry at selfish things that are going to destroy yourself and your family. <laughs> إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعود بالله من شر الفسنة وسيئات أعمالنا وأسك الله سبحانه وتعالى for his guidance. We want to close because the time is up. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says ولا ولولا دفع الله الناس بعضهم ببعض فسد الأرض. And if Allah do not check one set of people by means of another, the earth would indeed fall to mischief. And this ayah is very important. Where we are from this ayah. How do we act? The other hadith that the Prophet ﷺ helped you, brother in Islam, 
it is Dalam or Madlum, transgressors who is being transgressed against. How was it the Prophet Allah when they asked the Sahaba? If he, he was Dalim, Madlum, we know how to help him. So if harm has gone down to him, we're going to stand on his side, we're going to defend him. But if he's a Dalim, what would you do? You hold him back. You hold him back and you help him against his own nafs. By telling him, brother, you cannot act this way. It is haram. It is not the right thing. It's not good for you. It's not beneficial. We as a community, we are not we're going to stand and hold you back. We are not against you. We love you, but we're holding you back from your own anger, from your own distraction. We don't walk away when we see, you know, people are angry or people, you know, marriages have been destroyed and we sit on the sideline. We should take the initiative to make the difference, to make things better, to help calm the situation. Do not let our biases, our anger that we carry in our heart to our life to misjudge and be unjust toward others. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تَعْفُوا وَتَصْفَحُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ If you pardon and forgive, pardon and forgive, that means you close this chapter, you forget about it. It does not affect you anymore. You forward it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you say, in my heart, I forgive that brother. I forgive that sister. That sister. I wish good for them. This is the platform we must create. This is the environment we must have as a Muslim Ummah. Stop getting angry at situation. Stop getting angry at others for no reason. Why? Why are you angry? What's the benefit of destroying another human being? What benefit do you benefit at the end of the day? Will Allah subhanahu wa say, Kuntum khayra ummatin khujat lin nas ta'amununa bil ma'ruf tan hauna aril munkar. I'm going to close with ayah. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la yashar qawmun min qawmin asa an yakunu khayran minhum. Wala nisa'un min nisa'in asa an yakunna khayran minhunna. Wala tanmizu anfusakum wa la tanabazu bil alqab. Bi'sa ismu al-fusuq ba'da al-iman. Wa man liyatu fa ulaika humu al-dalimun. Who you believe, if not group, scuffle one other group, it might be that the latter is better than the former. Now some women scoff at a woman, it might be the latter is better than the former. No defame one another. No defame one another. No insult one another by nicknames. How bad it is to insult one another after having faith. And whoever does not repent, and such are indeed a dali moon, the wrongdoers. Look inward, my brothers and sisters. Wallahi to wallahi, we are good people. We let the environment shape us because we're far away from Allah. We let in our biases and our experiences that we might have in our life. Life is a test. Allah will test us as long as we get closer to Him. Our Iman gets stronger. The Prophet, the NBA, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallam was tested. They never got angry. What did he do in a taif when he went to give a da'wah and they hit him and he was bleeding and Jibreel said Allah is sending the mountain, the angel of the mountain. Then he came in and said, I would pick up this mountain and crush him and said, no, do not do that. That's the mercy of the Prophet sallallahu It is part of mercy, not anger. اللهم أدينا في من هديت وبعثنا في ما طيت وقينا الشر من عديت اللهم أدينا وهدينا اللهم أدينا وهدينا اللهم أدي أهل هذا بلد الإسلام وحبب إليهم الإسلام والمسلمين وجعلنا نكون قدوة لهم اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا ورحم أمواتنا واشف مرضانا اللهم احفظ أبنائنا وبناتنا وأزواجنا اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا اللهم إن الحق حقا وزقنا التباع والباطل باطل وزقنا اجتنابا اللهم أهدينا يا رب أرحم الراحمين اللهم أهدينا يا رب أرحم الراحمين نسأل الله عز وجل حسن الخاتمة نسأل الله عز وجل حسن الخاتمة نسأل الله عز وجل حسن الخاتمة اللهم وزقنا بحلالك عن حرامك وفضلك عن من سواك ويأسك الله سبحانه وتعالى to make us among the righteous to grant us mercy to make us see what is right and follow it, see what's wrong, and stay away from it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us steadfast, make us among the muntaqeen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give mercy to our parents and loved ones that depart and return to Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite our heart and the Ummah Sayyidina Muhammad and protect us from our own evil and the evil of others. 
اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وآخر الصلاة. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله استقيموا ورحمكم الله وخشعوا في صلاتكم